Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our daily strength today with our rhapsody of realities. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence here with us. Amen. As we share the word, thank you for the living water that flow from here Amen. to all that listen to your word. Amen. Thank you for the beauty that we see in our lives every day. Amen. As we enjoy daily our daily strength Amen. with our rhapsody of realities. Lord, your word can abide in us, and we abide in your word. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now, today's topic says, don't entertain Satan's thoughts. Don't entertain Satan's thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you don't entertain Satan's thoughts, that means there are thoughts that are allowed from God that you can entertain. Right? So now, let's dig into our scriptures. Philippians 4, verse 8. Let's see the thoughts of God that we should entertain. So that we now have to entertain certain thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, good report, think on these things. Hallelujah. Amen. So, contrary to entertaining certain thoughts, we have to think on what is true. We have to think on what is honest. We have to think on what is just. We have to think on what is pure. We have to, we have to think of what is lovely and of good report. Now, what does it mean to say, think on what is true? That should be the first question. We're going to be analyzing these things now because these are the thoughts that God wants us to have. These are the places that God wants us to keep our thoughts, right? So when the Lord says, think on whatsoever that is true, what is true? You know that Pilate asked that question. He asked Jesus the question, right? So let's get to, our, um, to the scripture in John 18, verse 37. John chapter 18, verse 37. Then Pilate responded, Oh, so then you are a king. You are right, Jesus said. I was born a king, and I have come into this world to prove what truth really is. And everyone who loves the truth will receive my words. Hallelujah. And, and if you read, you read this in the next verse, you, you'll see that Pilate asks him what is truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So for us to think on what is true, the word of God has given us is what? Is to think on God's word. Jesus said what? He said, I was born a king and I have come into this world to prove. So Jesus' life was to prove what? He said to prove what truth really is. So when you think on truth, what happens? You walk in truth. For the one who has set his mind on the truth, walk in the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then to make it clear to us, he said that, he says, who loves the truth, receive my words. So the God's word is truth. Hallelujah. Amen. God's word is truth. If you look at the book of John chapter 17, verse 16 to 17. John 17, 16 to 17, it says, for they no longer belong to this world any more than I do. Your word is truth. So make them holy by the truth, just as you commissioned me to represent you. Who is saying this? Jesus. Right? We was talking to the Father. Right? So he said your word is what? Truth. So Jesus was confirmed that God's word is truth. He is the living word of God. He said well, the word of God was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hallelujah. So God's word, when we study Jesus' life, we are studying the truth of God's word. We are reading God's word. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Amen. And he confirmed it to us. I said that the Lord is what? Truth. So make them holy by the truth. You see that? So we are to set our heart on what? On whatever that is what? True. And by doing so, that means you are setting your heart on the word of the living God. You are, your mind, your heart is, your your thoughts are set on the word of the living God. You are thinking on God's word. So the first thing a person must do as a child of God, for you to counter the thoughts of the enemy, not to entertain the thoughts of the enemy, the first step we must take is what? Set your eyes and your thoughts on what? Think on what? On the truth of God's word. And then how do you, when you say think of, and you look at that scripture, it says, make them holy by truth. That means the word of God makes us holy, Right? The truth of God's word makes us holy. And this is why Jesus ascended and the Holy Spirit has been given to us. So that as we set our 
thoughts on what is true, we can actually live the truth of God's word. Because God's word is true. And to help us, the Father now gave us his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And now if you look at the scripture, John chapter 14, verse 16. I'll read to 17. It says, I read from the Passion Translation, John 14, 16 to 17. It says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Savior, the Holy Spirit of truth, who will be to you a friend just like me, and he will never leave you. The world can't receive him because they can't see him or know him. But you know him intimately because he remains with you and will live inside you. Hallelujah. So to think of God's word is what? To think on what is not feasible in terms of your physical eye seeing it. And the Holy Spirit have come to help us to live the truth that we can meditate on. Hallelujah. So whatever is true, keep your eyes on it. So what, how can you find what is true? God's word has been given to us in the heavenly kingdom realm where we dwell. We must understand that, that we have the heavenly kingdom realm of God. God's kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible even talks about it as well. The Bible talks about, you know, that the people that are poor, you know, Jesus said that, I um, the word of God said that he became poor that would be rich. Right? How did he become poor that would be rich? He took up the nature of the son as the son of man so that we can become sons of God when he resurrected from the dead. You understand that? So he came as a son of man, as son of God, but he took up the nation as a son of man. So the essence of how he became poor, that means he brought us to the place of oneness with God. He made us sons of God. He brought us to the heavenly kingdom realm of God. And that what makes us rich. Hallelujah. Amen. That what makes us what? Rich. So we must understand, and that's why if you look at the scripture from Matthew 5 verse 3, Jesus said, what, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the people that are actually poor are people who are what? Poor in the spirit. For this is what? It is what? Kingdom of heaven. So we have come to the kingdom of heaven. What powers the kingdom of heaven? The word of God. So the word of God gives us what? Our hidden treasures that we have in the kingdom of heaven. And we are the ones who live the word of God and bring it on this earthly realm. Because the kingdom of heaven, this earthly realm, the letters in the greater. This earthly realm is also existing in the kingdom of God, right? In the, in the heavenly kingdom realm. Hallelujah. So that means you set your eyes on God's word. You have to set your mind on what? God's word. To, to not entertain Satan's thoughts means that what? It doesn't matter whatever the enemy is trying to show you out there. What does the word of God say? That's the truth. So the truth, the truth is what, what you set your eyes on. So whatsoever things are true, that means if someone is found sick, what's the truth about the person? He's healed in Christ for a believer, right? So when you have someone, a believer who has felt signs of sickness, what's the truth about the believer? Don't set your thoughts on that sickness. Don't contemplate or that. Don't try to entertain that sickness. It's from the enemy. It's a wrong pastor from the enemy. It's the wrong pastor that the enemy is trying, trying to give you. What do you do? Set your eyes on the truth, which is of the heavenly kingdom realm. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit will help you to set your eyes on the truth so that you can pull from heaven your, he- your healing power, your healing that God, Jesus has done for you and make it manifest on this physical realm. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are many things he has done for us. Are you going through troubles? He says in Colossians 2 verse 15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So you can use this everywhere, triumphing over them by what? The cross. So everything that enemy tried to use against people have been finished by the cross. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ was finished it all. That was just said what? It is what? Finished. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter whatever enemy tries to use against you out there to, you know, to give you a form of thought because it comes from a form of thought. Now, when the person is entertaining those thoughts, what happens? The person will now begin to what? Walk in those thoughts. Remember we talked about that. That is the spirit of truth. He has given us his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to help us live the truth. Now, Satan himself, a very stupid person, has released his demons. Now, when people entertain those demonic thoughts, you know what happens? They begin to walk in the thoughts of those demonic activities. There are just people that walk, they, they do things, they don't know how come they did those things. That's because of what? Those demons gave them the thoughts, and somehow they accepted it. Now, they see themselves what? Put the thought to practice. So you and I have to set our eyes on the heavenly words, 
things given to us. That way, people of the world, this world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because he is not physically seen. He lives in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So set your eyes on what is what? True. What has the Lord said? So it is finished. It is finished. Every sickness, every disease, every trouble is finished. So set your eyes on it. Refuse to see what the enemy is saying. People are coming against you one way or the other. Know that it is finished. Hallelujah. Amen. Those troubles are finished. Even now, I declare for you, if you are going through any trouble in your life in terms of health challenges, financial challenges, I declare, let the living, the, the, the living waters flow from this altar and, and, and indeed put life in, the, on that, in Jesus' name. Amen. Anywhere you need life in your health, receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. I declare you healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare you healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. For the Lord Jesus says it is finished. That means that suffering is finished. That sickness is finished. That, that rejection is finished. Everything the enemy tried to put you down and cause you to walk in shame. The Lord says it is finished. By the cross have you triumphed. I declare it so for you now. Receive in Jesus' name. That you are set free. That, 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 that chain is broken from you right now. I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare you free. For now, the truth is what you're going to walk in, in Jesus' name. And have you been tormented by the devil, and that demonic spirit manipulating things around you, or keeping you in bondage? Those demons are cast out now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you are set free, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, he says what? Whatsoever thing is true, and then he says, the next one is what? Honest. Honest. That means we should set our eyes on things that are what? Honest. Now we have known the heavenly. Now we have known the things that are made available to us in the heavenly kingdom realm. We have not known who we are, our, our, where we have come from. We have a mindset because of where we have come from. We don't take like the people of the world. That means anything we are involved with, we should be what honest. Now, what does it mean to be honest? Let's look at a dictionary. You know, we look, look at a dictionary, right? When we are studying the Word of God, so we can all be on the same page. To be honest is what it says: free of deceit. Truthful and sincere. Hallelujah. That means in your affairs with men, you must be what? Free of what? Deceit. You should be truthful. So anything that is contrary to being truthful, being sincere with men, don't, don't accept it. Don't meditate on it. Are you in a particular deal with your fellow men? And it looks like there's a way you can play that man. Maybe the man is not even aware because he, have, he has fronted you and he only has given you his trust. And then, and then yeah, now you are the one that, that know all about the business. Just ensure that you do what is what? Honest. What you know that is sincere. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't try to play around it. Don't try to deceive him. Don't, don't, don't walk in deceit. Be free of what? Deceit. Hallelujah. Amen. What's the next thing that we have here? He said, so we are, are going to think of what is honest, right? Hallelujah. Amen. Because dishonesty is from the enemy. Right? So now the next thing says what? Just. Just. So we have to think on what is what? Just. So what does it mean to say just? You want to say something? What does it mean to say just? To be in right standing with God. To be in right standing with God. Okay. I love that statement. Now let's go to our dictionary. Let's see what the dictionary says. Eh? Just, 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 just. Okay. Of course you are right. Yeah. But Bible said that the just shall live by faith. And the Bible calls us, the word of God calls us, God calls us what? The just, right? And we shall live by faith. And why, why are we called the just? Because we have received his righteousness. So we, and because we have received his righteousness, we are already in what? In right standing with God. So you are right in your, in your statement. Hallelujah. So let's look at the dictionary. So let's see how the, the, you know, the, the, the word understands just. Hallelujah. It says just means what? Based on. Or behaving according to what is morally right and fair. And which is still the same. Because they are doing what is morally right and fair before God. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So that means to be just. That means says a hand on what is what? Just. Do those things that are what? Morally what? Right. Behaving what what? According to what? What is what? Morally what? Right. So in the system of the world, though that the world has corrupted it. In some of the world, they have tried to do things like men and men marrying each other. They have tried to make it like you look like it's morally right, right? But before God, is 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 a taboo. It's wrong. You understand? So the men, because the enemy have tried to corrupt the system of the the, the devil, Satan is one that you know that have corrupted the system and that has the system of this world, right? You know, so he has corrupted the system, and people are now making what is immoral to be what moral. 
look moral. What is wrong to before men? It looks it looks like it's morally right, but before God, it's wrong. You see that? So we are called to what set our eyes on what is what just morally right. We know what is morally right. We know how to get it right. So we do whatever is right. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't accept even the, even now that we know that the enemy has slandered uh, morals. He's making the immoral things look like it's moral. That's sland- that's sl- slandering. He has slandered God's word by making immoral things look moral. So you that know the truth because you have come from a higher realm, you must apply the truth in all that you do. Hallelujah. Amen. So in your workplace, whatever you are doing in your workplace, you have been employed to work somewhere. Do only what is morally right. Hallelujah. Amen. And then if you are trying to make any pass any judgment, make sure that what is what morally what right. Hallelujah. Amen. What is the next thing that we have here? Pure. Pure. Hallelujah. What does it mean to be pure? You want to tell us? <laughs> so to be pure, let's take our dictionary straight up. To be pure means what? To be pure means what? Not mixed with any other substance or material. That means that simply means what? Not corrupted. A thing that is not corrupted. You know that you are born of the incorruptible word of God, right? Mm-hmm. But in this word is what? Corruption. The word has been corrupted already. Mm-hmm. The word has been corrupted. That's why you have the, the, the knowledge of good and evil. Now, before, when God made all things, the Bible said that God saw that all that he made was very good. Right? That means the world was looked, everything would look perfect. But it asked man not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. That evil there is the corruption itself. So man permitted it by eating from the wrong tree. You see that? So well, what, what are we called to meditate upon? The things that are pure. What we know that is what? Does not have any form of corruption. So anything that I know that is of corruption, what do you do? Reject it. Reject it. Anything that is cor- corruption is contrary to God's word, right? Corruption is of evil. Corruption is, you know, don't try to be, I'm a Christian, but, you know, you're in a workplace. And the workplace, you are, the place you are working, God has sent you there as light in the, in the dark world. Even the, even the office that they have sent you, the place they have sent you, the company has sent you, they are involved in darkness. Don't forget, they are the light in that dark world. Don't go there and then you have found out that there are corrupt ways that the, the officials of that place make things happen. Then you want to accept the corruption there. You know, they want to be morally right as well. You know, by, you know, you are morally right, they incentive, I want to accept corruption. That's, 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 not, that's not from God. Hallelujah. That's not from God. You know, that's not from God. Some people say things like um, that, that, that it's okay for one to, you know, um, release about 80%. Of what that's what men, men of the world have tend to be morally right. They release eighty percent of you know of the funds, and then twenty percent divert it for themselves. As long as you are working in that office, you are, you, are, you, should, you should be able to play the game well. You know, at, you know, at least you're not being wicked. That, that's not right. That is corruption. So anything that will make you work in corruption, meditate on the what is what pure. Refuse to accept anything that is corrupt. Meditate on what is pure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I believe the Lord will teach you what and how to apply this in our personal lives. So from this day, we refuse to entertain the thoughts of the enemy. From this day, we refuse it. You have a workplace, you have a work colleague who will come with thoughts. You have a work colleague might even be the one that the enemy is trying to use to plant the thought in your mind. You come and tell you, hey, see, what's up? Can't you see that we can do this this way, this way, this way? Just do it once and you see how much you can make. Don't entertain it. What do you do? Reject it. Cast out that devil from you. Hallelujah. Now, what's the next point? Next point says what? Lovely. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. So we have to think of what is what? Lovely. Of course, you know, what, you know the meaning of lovely. Of every one of us here, we're all lovely, right? At least I look lovely to you, right? So uh, my appearance is good, right? Hallelujah. So whatever is lovely, lovely simply means from dictionary, it means very beautiful or attractive. So that means the things you have, to, you have to set our eyes on are things that men, because see that every other thing we have discussed earlier, we are based on internal doings. Truth wasn't seen with the physical eyes, right? With these earthly physical eyes, as in men of the world cannot see it physically, right? If you want to say it that way. But of course, when you leave it, they will not see it, right? But it's of an internal decision to make, right? You are, make, you are putting your thought on the truth. We are not seeing it per se. Then now, also, um, what else? Just, right? Then pure. 
But by the time you start coming to lovely, you have to do it what? Attractive and beautiful. That means the, the, artwork, the, artwork, the artwork workings of it is now being seen to be what? Attractive and beautiful. Now the next point says what? And of good report, which means what people can testify about what has, has been done is of what? Good report. It's not a bad report. You see that? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you have to think on these things. So now let's summarize these things so we know how to apply it in our personal lives. Let's assume someone want to get married. You know, it's God's word that God has given us his word. He says, uh, fill the earth and multiply, right? Right? We should fill the earth, right? So God, God's word has been given to man. He blessed man. That man should go and fill the earth, right? So it is, it is God's word for a child, for a, for a young lady to say, I want to marry, to accept someone to marry. You know that? It's God's word. So that is what is true, right? So the lady can put her heart on what is true, which is God's word, that she can get married, right? Now, it will be honest for her. How can you put the honesty aspect of it? It will be honest for her to be what? Eh? It will be honest for her to do what? It will be honest for her to do what? How can you put it honest? It will be honest for her to what? Make up her mind on one person to marry. That's what we call being honest. A young lady that, that tries to, you know, as though she's working in confusion. You know, she's trying to marry one person and she's still having courtship, that she's having courtship with about three different men. That's not being honest. You know that? So to be honest for her to do what? Make up her mind that she wants to marry one person. That means she's being honest to the person that she wants to marry. If not the person that she wants to marry, she wants to spend the rest of her life with. She will not waste the, man, the young man's time. I'm, I'm trying to explain this to us, right? Are we getting, are we getting this? Right? So what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Just. Right? It will be just for her, and just with what? What is morally right? It will be just for her to do what? Courtship first. Now what is just? It's morally right to do what? Courtship. Right? Mm -hmm. No, now she has been honest to say, 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 say one man, this is the man I want to marry. First of all, the word of all came to her that she can marry and multiply and give birth to children. And that she has received God's word. And the second part is what? Be honest. And now for her to set her heart on what is honest, she is going to decide exactly the person she's going to spend her life with. And now she has chosen the person that has been honest with the person. The one that she's not going to spend her life with, she's not going to deceive the person or play around with the person. Now, to be just is what she has decided that, yes, what is morally right is that I have to do courtship with the person for some time. It might be two weeks, it might be three weeks, as has been led to do. Hallelujah. Then after she has done the courtship, she has to be what? Pure. What does it mean to be pure? Not to engage in sex before marriage. That means she will not accept corruption before she gets married. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So she remained pure. So she set her eyes on to be pure. That in the midst of this courtship, I must remain what? Pure. Until the day, appointed day that I'm getting married. And then, then what happens? Now, what does it mean to be lovely? That's what men will now begin to see around you. That attractiveness, that beauty of even your marriage and your, your work, your togetherness as, as um, you coming together as one. That day you guys are meant together to be one, as together. Hallelujah. That, that external thing that now people can see that you and your husband have become. Hallelujah. And what does, it have, what does it mean to have good reports? Now people can begin to testify that you are living in harmony with your, in, your, in your home. You are living in joy in your home. People can testify that your, your home, God has given you children, riches. Hallelujah. So you see the good report now has been spreading everywhere. The good report will now begin to announce everything. So you as a, as a, as a young lady, you set your eyes on these things. Towards aspect of getting married. Yes, I want to get married. Yes, God has given me his word that I should get married. I'll get married. And I'm going to get married. I'll get married to the right person that God has given me. If I get married to the right person, I'll do what is morally right before men, including to do the, um, go to the bride's price. I'm not going to marry. Yes, you want somebody, you want to marry to somebody. You want to get married to somebody. You have accepted the person as the person you're going to get married to. You're not going to enter the person's house and begin to live with the person. Whereas I've not gone down your bride's price yet. You see that? So do what is morally right, and then that's the courtship aspect, and get the things done. They get a bright price paid and everything. Then have it done beautifully, and then let your life be of what? Good report. So set your eyes at, yes, as I get married, these are the beautiful things that will happen in my life. Hallelujah. This, these, are the ways, these are the ways I'm going to work with, with, uh, with my husband. These are the ways I'm going to be respectful to my husband. These are the results I'm going to expect in my, my beautiful family. Hallelujah. By doing so, you see God's word, what? You see your eyes are set on the word, on the right things. Because contrary to what we just said, what the enemy wants people to set their eyes on is on the, on the, on the, on the opposite direction. 
a young girl that's yet to get married, she's already thinking of maybe she has to sleep with several men before she now finally chooses one who's trying to sleep and um, to finally get married or settle with. You know? And even she has gone to settle with that person. And some of them they were even moving to the her person's house before they even start talking about how to get married. You see that they didn't meet those things directly opposite to what God has designed to be. That's rebellion. You see the opposite there. So you have to set your eyes as a young lady, set your eyes on what? On what is what has been given to us according to the will of God. Praise the Lord. Are we getting this? Hallelujah. Now let's get to our rhapsody of realities. Some time ago, the report went viral of a 32 years old nurse who was accused of murdering, of, of murdering seven newborn babies, including two mothers from a set of triplets. She carried out this despicable disp- act over the course of, the, of a year in the neonatal unit of a certain hospital. Now, the police had discovered apparent confession notes from her home after her, her, her arrest, in which she had penned some of her humorous thoughts. One, on one of the notes, she had written in capital letters, I am evil. I did this. What would make a lady carry out such a diabolic act and confess herself as evil? Those suggestions we are given to her by demons. You see that? So this tells you that if she had rejected those demonic thoughts from an early start, she would have done all those works. If she had set her, her, on her heart on what is right, on what is true, God's word would not ask her to do such a thing. Right? It's not even honest because she was not, she was, she was not working on honesty before the, the mother, the parents of these children. These are people's children. She was not honest with the parents. Right? And she was not anywhere just because morally it was not right that a person should do such a thing. Kill children. Right? And also looking at the fact that what? That it is not, it is of corruption. It's total corruption. Now even, even she, the, the, the note says what? I am evil. I did this. And it's not a good report. That's why the report went forth. That look at how the wrong thing that was done. The report went viral of a 32 years old who I was accused of murdering. So it's not of a good report. Hallelujah. So this summarizes what has happened to a person who was entertained certain thoughts. And this tells you that these thoughts are, this kind of thoughts are what made people to go and commit suicide. People do things like you see a young boy enter into a school and begin to shoot a fellow student. This, are, this, this started as a thought. He was entertaining the thoughts one way or the other. I declare that those thoughts are over in Jesus' name. Amen. They, they, they may be thoughts of suicide or thoughts of hatred. Some thoughts can come to someone for no reason. And when he or she dwells on them, the demons go to the next level of making them act their thoughts. You see that? Just like what happened between Eve and, and the serpent. That's Satan, Right? The serpent deceived Eve that, you know, by slandering God's word, the God said she should not eat out of the trees of the, of the, of the, of the garden, right? That means, he, and Eve was responding to the, to the serpent, that God said that she should, should eat of the, all the trees of the garden, but she should not touch this one, right? So, you see that, for her to be having that conversation with the, with the enemy, with, with the serpent, what happened? She was even entertaining the thoughts already. You see that? All she should have done at the initial time was what? To say, you serpent, get it behind me. Out of this garden, you have come contrary to the word of God, right? The gospel serpent was trying to make her feel like this eating of this tree can be cool. And Bible said that even the tree was pleasant to the eyes. You see that? So now you have to understand something that these people fell for this for this aspect because of what they entertained the thoughts of the demonic thoughts. And then the demon now he says what such thoughts came to someone for no reason, and when he or she dwells on them. So Eve was dwelling on those thoughts with the serpents. And at the end, what happened? She took off the tree and ate. So when those people entertain such thoughts, he said the demon go to the next level of mouth, making them act their thoughts. That's why Ephesians 4 verse 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. Hallelujah. He says what? Neither give forth place to the devil. That means once those things come, what do you do? Cast them out at once. Any thought that is coming to your mind, it might be that you have a quarrel with somebody and some thoughts are coming to your mind, how you can come against the person and destroy the person. What do you do? Cast out those thoughts. 
Doesn't matter whatever the enemy is trying to show you concerning that person. What do you do? Cast it out. Let love what prevail. Hallelujah. Cast it out. Don't entertain those thoughts. Don't try to try to you know see reasons why the thoughts should be okay. You know, even when you're having thoughts of adultery and fornication, what do you do? Cast it out instantly. Don't entertain it. People that entertain such thoughts are people that what Bible said what they have committed a sin in their hearts. You see that? Hallelujah. That because just the way Abraham accepted the thoughts of God and killed Isaac, even in his heart, when he was when God asked to, um, to sacrifice Isaac to him, you see that. So we must be what willing to only accept what God has said. So no, never give place to the devil. That's Ephesians four verse twenty seven says, you give place to him by giving him, you give place to him by giving place to his thoughts or words, his thoughts or Sorry, his thoughts and words. So how do those thoughts come to you? They can come in form of words. That's why you should be careful of the things you watch on TV, on the internet. These are thoughts and words being distributed everywhere. When we say, ah, just the internet, I'm just having fun on the internet. Be careful what you watch on the internet. Words are being thrown to you. Thoughts are given to you from the internet. Some of these things we watch on TV, these are thoughts and words from demonic realm. Hallelujah. So don't entertain them. That's why it's much beautiful for you to put the, put the atmosphere of worship in your house. Let the, let the presence of God be in everywhere in your house. Hallelujah. Instead of watching certain things that ought not be so, what do you do? Set, watch what is right before God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't entertain these thoughts. Don't entertain his thoughts. When he comes with, with, those, negative, with those negative, depressing thoughts, Thoughts that are contrary to God's word. Tell him. Tell him off immediately. Hallelujah. Tell him what? Off immediately. Respond with the word and he will flee. So don't accept, don't entertain the word, the, the, the thought at all. Don't try to give any room. Don't say that, yes, I'm going to just watch this thing and then I, I know how to take care of myself. No. You know, don't even try to give any room for it. Hallelujah. Don't even say things like, um, um, let me see how these people are doing this. Or maybe, for example, someone says, okay, let me just enter the club and go and see. Maybe I can just enter that club and, you know, you know that that place that where, where things are going on wrongly, according to God's word. Entering the club alone, that means you are exposing yourself to the things that immoral behaviors are there. And that, that somehow those things that come to you as well, thoughts and words. So for you, for you to have entered that club, you have what? That means you have said the word, entertaining the devil's thoughts. So what, what I told you to do? Flee from that place. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If he tries to run rampage around you, remember what Jesus said will be a sign for those who believe in him. He said, in my name shall they cast out devils. So cast him out. Cast out his thoughts. Hallelujah. So when those thoughts come to you, what do you do? Cast out his thoughts. Praise the Lord. Any thought that is contrary to God's word, when, when thoughts are coming to you, to start that thought, or maybe depressed. Have you ever heard a man of God say things like he was depressed? That means for, for, those, for him to feel depressed, that means what? The devil was feeding with so much thoughts, trying to tell him how he has tried to do certain things and he felt rejected. That's from the enemy. What do you do? Cast out those thoughts in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Set your eyes on the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The other finish of your faith. Of the things he has done for you. And be able to count your blessings one by one. Look at the thanksgiving. Be a person of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't entertain these thoughts that will cause you to end up towards depression. Praise the Lord. Amen. So cast out the thoughts of, of, of the enemy. So many times what happened in our world are influenced by demons. That's because the system of the world was created by Satan. So things I say are happening around the world. You just hear things like... Um, um, two young, two brothers are just fighting, um, arguing about one small thing, yeah. and then the younger one stabbed the other one. And when, when the other one died, he now stabbed himself and he died. That tells us that these are demonic things happening. That for, for them to have done such a thing, he was determining the, the demonic thoughts, and then that brought forth the action that happened in his life. So cast out any thought that is contrary to God's word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Leave no room. Now Ephesians four verse twenty seven says. Leave no such room, I read from Amplified Version. It says, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Be that way. 
Be that way. No opportunity to the enemy. Be that way. Even when you're watching, maybe you just came across, maybe you're in a hotel and you sat somewhere, maybe you want to go and bob your hair or in a salon. And then you saw on the TV something that is contrary to the will of God. What do you do? Instantly, you see some people, they speak again. You see someone speaking and speak, speaking, and speaking to a television. It's casting the door thought. So I do that myself anyway. You know, that time you just come on TV, maybe you went somewhere and you saw some um, things on TV. You speak back to the TV. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why I love a man of God I respect so much. He said he went for an interview and the lady was asking him, what if, he said he doesn't fall sick. The lady told him now, what if you fall sick, what happens? He said, woman, I'll not accept your thoughts because what you're, now you're trying to give me this word from the enemy. So I cast out that thought in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So don't entertain it. It might come in form of, you know, one word or the other. It might come to television. Cast out that thought. Don't give any room. Don't give, no, give no opportunity to the enemy. Hallelujah. And when you do this, you realize that one thing for sure. Love makes you live above all these things. Love. 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 Hallelujah. Now, so many things that have happened in our world are influenced by demons. That's because the system of this world is was created by Satan. And only men and women of faith in the word of God can use God's word to change things. So we are the ones that can use God's word to what? Change things because we have come from a different realm. And in the realm, in the realm where we have come from, the world we have come from is the kingdom of, of what? Of his son Jesus Christ. So we have come with the word of the living God to bring what? The change that must happen on this earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the beautiful thing about setting your eyes on, on, on those beautiful thoughts? Yeah? Because a man that sets, sometimes devil wants to feed people, even believers. Feed them with thoughts of grudges, thoughts of anger, right? This person just messed up with you. Show him who you are. Try to, you know, like Elijah. Elijah was provoked and he commanded, the children provoked him. He commanded Elijah to come and eat up the children. Elijah came out and ate the children. That was, that was him working in anger. Now, when Jesus walked on this earth, his disciples told him the same thing. He said, what? You don't know what spirit you have. Which means he has, he's not of that spirit of, of Elijah that doesn't understand certain things. Hallelujah. So you must understand that there are thoughts that come to your heart because of one thing or the other. You must not allow such things because there's a flow of the rivers, rivers of living water that comes from you. Hallelujah. So don't entertain any thought that make you contrary. You wonder that you're a person that you are in this world, but not of what? Of, of the world. Now let's look at Proverbs 4 verse 23 from the Passion Translation. Proverbs 4, 23, it says, So above all, guide the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you do. Pay attention to the welfare, to the welfare of your innermost being, for from, the, from there flows the word, wellspring of life. That means when you can guide your thoughts, what happens? It says what? Guide the affections of your heart. You must guide your thoughts so that your those things don't come and bring certain things into your heart. Be careful of what you hear and what you see, the Bible says, right? By doing so, what? You are guiding what? Your affections of your heart. So you must be willing to do these things. It says what? For they affect all that you do. That means whatever you entertain is what becomes of your action. They will feed your thoughts of grudges, of anger, concerning someone. Control and you're feeding your thoughts. Don't entertain those thoughts. Cast them out. Out, devil. I refuse to do this. I walk in love. You don't allow yourself to be what? To be fooled than to what? To fall into the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. It's better for you to lose that thing at all, whatever it is, and stay in a place of joy and a place of love. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't miss the love line. He said, pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. That's how we should be conscious of things. Welfare, you know what's called welfare? That means as you take care of your body, your physical body, I take care of your physical body, you bath every day, you, you use a nice expensive, um, at least I know you for that, um, uh, lotion and all that, you know, to look good, right? Hallelujah. The Bible says what? Pay attention to what? To the welfare of your innermost being. So as you pay attention to the welfare of your external body and other things you do in this earthly realm, how do you take attention to your innermost being? By guiding your heart. That by what? Rejecting the thoughts of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because the person that is giving himself to grudges, that's why even Bible talks about what? If you are bringing things, you have to go and forgive your brother or sister you have anything against. Mm. Because also your prayer will not be hindered. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. He said, for, for from there flows the, 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 the wellspring of life. That means the only thing that can hinder the flow of the wellspring of life is that when a man hears to the thoughts of the enemy. And they're talking about these thoughts outside the fact that, yes, the enemy will try to throw things to, to a person in terms of, um, to make him think contrary to the world's will, in terms of his healing and all that is out there. There's a thing about the, the heart that you must guide. They will, in terms of what anger grudges out there, right? So that the flow of the, of the what, of, of what, of the, of the wellspring of life from you, everywhere you go, it flows from you. That wellspring of life is what? Love. It's of the love of God that is in you. That flow of his grace in you. Hallelujah. Will not be hindered for any reason. But you'll be a person of joy. That flow of love, of joy from you. The fruits of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we blessed today? Amen. Of course we are by the grace of God, right? Hallelujah. Now, take this confession with me. Say this like you mean it. Of course, you know you mean it. Hallelujah. Say, Satan has nothing in me. Has nothing in me. I refuse to harbor fear. I refuse to harbor fear. Anger. Anger. Grudge. Grudge. Bitterness. Bitterness. Or unforgiveness. unforgiveness. For love rules in my heart. For love rules in my heart. The word of God continually purifies my heart. Purging it of all unrighteousness. And with the word in my heart and on my lips, I will forever be indomitable. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. I refuse to harbor fear, anger, grudges, bitterness, and unforgiveness. For love rules in my heart. That is what the Lord says to you. Love rules in your heart this day. Now, I want to be declaring words over the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. I want to be declaring words over, first of all, over our nation where we are right now. That every satanic influence that have caused men to walk in, 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 in opposition of what God has said, we want to be casting them out now in Jesus' name. We're going to cast out those devils, those demons that have tried to make men, that put those thoughts in the hearts of men to make these men do things that are contrary to the will of God. We come against those things that are happening in our city, in our society, in our, in our nation. We come against it in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. There are things happening in your nation, in your city, that are done by satanic, by demonic thoughts that are being fed into the hearts of men. Come against those things that never again we declare that those devils are cast out from them. Those by the enemy will cast out those devils from them in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that the ones have been held in bondage, that they may have fed with the thoughts that have come from demonic crime. We declare that free from those thoughts in Jesus' name. We receive that indeed there will be awakening that spirit. There will be awakening that spirit. We cast out those thoughts from them. We will we, we, um, we, 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 we remove every, every seed that my father has not planted in the hearts of men. We remove those seeds in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. For it was not planted by my father in heaven. So I remove those seeds now in Jesus' Jesus' name, from their heart, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Rakatala Bashata, O Bradiski and Makushka Bahata, Redobos, Kiana Makateskia, Lakatoshia Kadadado, Leka, Lakati, Zakatosh, Lebradoski Aba, Libakoski Aba. We remove those seeds, those seeds that never planted in the hearts of men, that cause men to walk contrary to the will of God, that cause men to walk in demonic things of, of, of the enemy. Lord, we declare those seeds that cast us from them. O Pakatala Bashata, Rekosha Kata. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me declare it. That the thoughts of the living God will reign in this nation. Oh, Barabasata, from the, from the hair to the least, the thoughts of the living God will reign in the hearts of men. Oh, men will set their heart on what is true. Men set their heart on what is honest, on what is pure, what is just. Oh, and of good report everywhere. Maroskiaba, Maroskiaba, from the hair to the least, everywhere in the Lord Jesus Christ. Rikata, kata, 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 likato, shakata, rabanda, redebosa, rabadada, rikarabosha, rabradi, zebraroshka, makosi, 
Ziate, Makoziate, Ribako Shaka Taka Taka Ta. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your tongue, O Lord. Feel the heart of men. Makatarabas. Shata to the word of the Lord, O Lord, Marabosha to the living word of God everywhere. Oh, Rakatanaba Shata has a word spread forth everywhere. Oh, Makushka Bradiba, Lord, who strengthen the Christian, those who have called the Lord to preach the gospel through the entertainment, O Lord, Lord, that has turned the inner man, O Lord. They have all they need, O oh Lord. They're wrong with the vision. How they spread the gospel between entertainment, O oh Lord. Oh, Pakatarabashata. Oh, Rakateski de Branda. The ones we have called, O oh Lord, to spread the gospel through dancing. Oh, whatever way we have called us, O oh Lord. Lord, we declare that indeed you are the extraordinary strategies, O oh Lord. The, the strategies you have given us as children. Lord, we are indeed, indeed applying them all. And we are spreading the gospel everywhere. Bringing forth the thoughts of God everywhere. Bringing forth the word of God everywhere. Rakatarabashata. In the universities, O oh Lord. Oh, Rako Shakata, you have called to own schools. You have called believers to own schools that we may preach the gospel in our schools. Lord, we declare many more schools are owned. Maros Kiribranda, that we can plant the right thoughts in the hearts of children. Rakatarabashande Kiska Bradoshka, Lekruskiabane Makushkaba, Rakatoskiaba, Rakatoskiaba, Reko Shaka, Reko Shakadia, Rakadia, Rakadia, Rakadia. Jakatari Bradoska, Marabande Makushkaba, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What I'm declaring for nations of the earth that every thought that the enemy have tried to put men in bondage. There are people that are working in bondage now, that the leaders of those nations are working in bondage. They are currently in bondage of the enemy's thoughts. So they're working in corruption. They're working in opposition of what we have just shared. They work in the, in the seats. They work. They work in. The, they work in corruption. They work unjustly. You know, they, they don't do things. They, they're not honest with themselves and the people that are serving. What I'm declaring that those bondage, those thoughts of, of bondage, those ways, those things that they may have tried to keep them in bondage, to use those things to 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 manipulate the people, to to put them in poverty, will come against the name of Lord Jesus Christ. That leaders of various nations of the earth will be set free now. They will be set free now, the Lord Jesus Christ. Rosha Katarabradis Karabranda, intercede for the for the kings. Rokatosh Kabradiba, intercede for them. Makatarabashata, intercede for them. Zekosh Kabaha, they will be awakening themselves and know whatever they have done in time past is wrong, and they will repent in Jesus' name. They will repent in Jesus' name. Makatosh Kabahata, Ribradoshka, that some of them are doing this thing, they think it is morally right, but before God it is morally wrong. They're going to be declaring that they will be awakened from their week, from their sleep, from their slumber, and know what is right before God. Oh, Pakatarabasha Tarabadeskia, oh, Pakatarabasha Tarabadeskia, Redebone Makush Kabradiba, Rekosh Kabaha, Rekosh Kabaha, Rekosh Kabaha, Rekosh Kabaha. Rekosh Kabaha, Rakataraba Sandaki Kabosha, Redoski Abanda, Redoski Abanda, we give you praise, King Jesus, Rako Shakataka Taka Taka Taka, for these leaders, O oh Lord, in the door turn from their wicked ways, they will turn back to you, Lord, they will run back to you, Maro Shadabrande Makush Kaba, yes, in the sea for, for believers who, are, who, who have been sent, and somehow they've been corrupted, in the sea for those ones, that the Lord will help them, that those ones will turn away from their wicked ways, and they will run back to their first love. The King of Kings, the Lord of all, Marabashane Kiskarabosha, they will return back to their first love. Rakatarabasha Katarabanda, Redika Diskere Brande Makushkaba, they will make things right again. Maroshkaba Iba Zande Kiskabradeshka, Rikatarabasata, Rekoshkaba, Rekosh, 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 Rekosh. Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Makatarabasande Kibradoshka, we give you praise, King Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Satan has nothing in you. Hallelujah. From today, you refuse to harbor fear. You refuse to harbor anger. You refuse to harbor grudges. You refuse to harbor bitterness. You refuse to harbor unforgiveness. For from this day, I declare for you, love will ruin your heart in Jesus' name. In everything that you do, the word of God will continually purify your heart. You'll be a person that speaks of the word of the living God. Never Lord Jesus Christ. You have portion you of all unrighteousness. Never Lord Jesus Christ. I declare for you, whatever you are doing this day, shall speak of God's righteousness. Shall speak of God's righteousness. Shall speak of God's righteousness. Everything that set your heart to do this day, I declare for you. It shall speak of what the word of God made perfect in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you walk in dominion in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your children are blessed. 
For your word, O oh Lord, is in their mouth, in their heart, and on, on, on their lips. Everywhere they go, they will speak of the living word of God. Amen. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, men and women have been upon the word of God day and night and put to the word to practice, O oh Lord. Thank you for the word of God will cause your children to reject every thought that comes from the enemy. Amen. Only the words you have said, the Lord will prevent in Jesus' name. The word that said that we walk in good health shall be prevent in Jesus' name. The word of God that said we walk in absolute prosperity shall prevent in Jesus' name. The word of God that said that we are free indeed shall walk in, in, in us in Jesus' name. None of the things of the enemy, through the entertainment industry, through the television, through the people around us, whatever way that the corruption of the word is coming against your children, none of these things will enter with them or stand with them in Jesus' name. The Lord will declare that your children will reject them all. That they will guide their hearts with all diligence. They will guide their hearts Heart, oh Lord, against anything that will try to hinder the flow of the blessing, the flow of the anointing of the of, of, of the of the world spring of life. Lord, they will guide their heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Your children, oh Lord, will everywhere they walk in, oh Lord, let the flow of your, of your blessing be seen among them. Let the flow of your blessing be seen among them. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I declare for you this day that this day as we walk through this day, you shall flow the 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 the, 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 the living spring of, 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 of life from you. Everywhere you go, the, the, the world spring of life shall flow from you into everything that you do this day and anyone that encounters you this day will encounter God in Jesus mighty name Amen. surely God's goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives we're going to dwell in the house of the living God forever and ever Amen and the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abounds with us now and forevermore Amen Shalom Shalom God bless you. Love you.